Good Sunday, everyone. Meteorologist Mark here with your forecast for your Sunday. And looking across the southeast, we see some unsettled weather with some showers stretching across portions of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. They have higher rain chances down in their neck of the woods than we do here in Tennessee, although our chances are low. They're not zero. And we see that on the five-day forecast. 20% chance for a shower here on the plateau today. 30% as you get farther west across Middle Tennessee, but um, all in all, not too bad of a Sunday. Uh, a few clouds around, so if you got outdoor plans, you might run into a shower, but um, I think you should stick with those plans. Highs in the low 70s, and then mostly sunny skies Monday through Wednesday. Stair stepping up closer to 80 degrees by the end of the week. 70 on Monday, stepping up to 77 by Thursday. By Thursday, we do see a few more clouds in the sky. Um, right now looking dry, but definitely looking like some clouds floating around for sure. And of course getting warmer by that point. So not too bad of a five day forecast. And on this day in 1912, according to a newspaper account, a terrific windstorm struck northeastern Montgomery County. That's Clarksville, which is about 50 miles or so northwest of Nashville. And that storm went on up into Todd County, Kentucky, destroying five residences and six tobacco barns. So um, sounds a lot like a tornado, doesn't it? A flock of several hundred sparrows were blown against a wall and killed. 1988, at early in the morning, a tornado hit uh, Kelly Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. And they had other tornadoes in Texas, too, and these were all being spawned by Hurricane Gilbert, which I talked about yesterday. You know, one of the most powerful hurricanes we've ever seen in the Caribbean um, and Gulf of Mexico that barreled into uh, Mexico. And uh, part of the effects of that were spawning tornadoes in Texas. 1989, Hurricane Hugo hit the Virgin Islands, producing wind gusts of 97 miles per hour at St. Croix. Now, it would pass over St. Croix and cause complete damage and devastation, and uh, producing 9.4 inches of rainfall. A ship called the Nightcap in the harbor of Colabra measured wind gusts as high as 170 miles per hour. Now, Hurricane Hugo would later go on, as we'll see in the coming days, to make landfall in South Carolina as one of the most powerful hurricanes they've ever seen. And again, that was in 1989. So one of my first memorable storms as a kid was watching Hurricane Hugo make landfall in South Carolina. You folks have a wonderful Sunday and keep looking up. For more weather information, just keep reading along that blog, meteorologistmark.com.